Sound Words, Christian Magazine, Volumes 91 to 98. Republished by Irving Risch, host of Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded podcast. The Coming of the Lord. In Prophecies from Jeremiah to Haggai. Jeremiah, who spoke so much regarding the righteous judgment that Israel merited because of their sins, was also enabled to look forward to the blessing of God's people, writing, Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth, Jeremiah 23 to 5. There would be fruit for God and man in Messiah as the righteous branch, and he would reign as king, in a time of prosperity on earth, where all would be in keeping with the mind of God. This is again prophesied of the branch of righteousness, in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 15, while Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 to 34 shows that this would be when the new covenant was brought in with rich blessings for God's people. From the Lord's words in the New Testament we learn that this would be based on his atoning work, the blood of the new covenant. Ezekiel, in chapter 1, shows the glory of the Lord, which was about to leave the temple and Jerusalem, above the firmament, and in the midst of it was, as the appearance of a man, Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 26 to 27. When the glory returns, at the coming of the Lord to reign, it shall enter, the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east, Ezekiel chapter 43 verse 4, and the Lord said to the prophet, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut, Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 2. The coming of the Lord in his glory will be a day of blessing for Israel, and, the name of the city from that day shall be Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 35. If the Spirit of Christ in Jeremiah is occupied with the sorrows of Israel, into which the Lord on earth entered. The Spirit of God in Ezekiel looks forward to the glory that shall fill the temple of the Lord when he comes again. Daniel, when interpreting the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar, looks forward to Christ's kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and, shall stand forever. Daniel chapter 2 verse 34, 44. In Daniel chapter 3 verse 25 Daniel tells us that Nebuchadnezzar saw one, like the Son of God, walking with his three faithful servants amidst the king's raging furnace, and in Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 to 14, Daniel, in vision saw one, like the Son of Man, coming, with the clouds of heaven, and there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, his dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. The one, whom we have seen as Son of God in chapter E and Son of Man in chapter 7, is none other than the coming, Messiah the Prince, who would be cut off before returning, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 to 26. Hosea, gives the scripture quoted by the Holy Spirit in Matthew chapter 2 verse 15, when Israel was a child, then I loved him, and called my son out of Egypt. Hosea chapter 11 verse 1, this scripture, while looking back to Israel being called out of Egypt, also looked forward to the coming of God's son, in whom the history of Israel was taken up afresh before God. Israel had grievously failed as their history shows, but all that God had desired in Israel was found perfectly in the Son of God. Joel, Amos and Obadiah all write of the day of the Lord, though not prophesying of Messiah personally. But that day will make known that Messiah is the Jehovah of Israel and also the lowly Jesus who was rejected by the nation when he came to save them and to bring to them the promised blessings of God. Jonah, as the Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12 verse 40, signified in his time in the whale's belly the time that he would lie in death, and the words of the prophet, in Jonah chapter 2 verses 5 to 6, express something of the feelings of the Son of God in his entering the depths that no man can fathom when made sin for us upon the cross. Micah, in the opening verses of Micah chapter 4, tells of the nations coming up to Jerusalem, when the Lord shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And when he shall make wars to cease and bring to the earth the long promised peace that he alone can bring. In Micah chapter 5, there is the scripture to which Herod was referred by the chief priests and scribes when he inquired of them where Christ should be born. This prophecy tells of the exact place of Christ's birth, but also of the glory of his person, for the part the leaders of Israel did not quote reads, whose goings forth have been from of old. From everlasting, Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Had the knowledge of this entered into the heart or mind of Herod, he might have realized his folly in seeking to destroy the holy babe. What glory shines in these verses that speak of the ruler in Israel, in his divine and eternal greatness. The coming ruler of Israel shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and he shall be great unto the ends of the earth, Micah chapter 5 verse 4.
these words surely have a bearing on both the first and second comings of the Lord Jesus. What follows has to do with his second coming. This man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land, for he will deal with the Assyrian, the rod of his anger. Judging them for their sins before bringing them into blessing along with Israel and Egypt. Isaiah chapter 19 verse 25. Nahum, in Nahum chapter 1 verse 15, writes, Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, words that speak of the character of the mission of the Lord Jesus while upon earth. And that also tell of him who came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 17. He will also announce peace to Israel when he comes again. Habakkuk looks forward to the time when, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. God's answer in Christ to all the evil that was found among his people Israel. Before the divine glory is seen in Christ's righteous reign, Zephaniah forewarns that the day of the Lord is at hand, when, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly, for it is, a day of wrath. A day of trouble and distress, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm, Zephaniah chapter 1 verses 7 to 16. There will be great blessing for men on earth, but there must first be the removal of evil in judgment. Haggai, speaking to the returned remnant of Israel, and especially to Zerubbabel the governor of Judah and Joshua the high priest, points forward to Messiah's coming, saying, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once. It is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, and in this place will I give peace, Haggai chapter 2 verses 6 to 9. Messiah was spoken of by Daniel as the desire of women, Daniel chapter 11 verse 37, for every woman in Israel coveted the privilege that fell to the Virgin Mary of being the mother of God's Christ. But Haggai writes of him as the desire of all nations. Once rejected by this world, the Lord Jesus shall come, and the desire of the nations will be satisfied in him, the Prince of Peace, who shall bring peace to this troubled world, filling God's house with his glory. As also filling the earth with the knowledge of that glory, as foretold by Habakkuk. Great upheavals need to take place before the divine glory can rest on earth. The kingdoms of this world have to be shaken, and the spheres of heavenly rule greatly disturbed, even as quoted in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 26 to 29, before the Lord takes over his kingdom, a kingdom that cannot be moved. To apprehend the force of the prophecy concerning the Lord's coming which is given here, we must understand the meaning of Hebrews chapter 12 and of much in the book of the Revelation. As is taught in Colossians chapter 1 verse 20, the Lord Jesus made peace through the blood of his cross, so that all things in the heavens and on the earth might be reconciled to God. Having laid the basis in atonement, the Lord Jesus, when he comes back again, will dispossess all who are in authority and are at enmity with God. When he takes possession of every sphere of rule and government in heaven and on earth, all will be pleasurable to the fullness of the Godhead. It was to this Haggai pointed forward when he wrote of the Lord shaking all things.